good morning all of you we are doing economics chapter number 2 people as resource and in this chapter now we'll discuss about the economic activities economic that means related with money when we are talking about economic activities so that means the activities which generate income simple language so economic activities related with the income that means whatever the activities the people are performing for money that is called economic activities so there are two types of activities one is economic and non economic activities which is also called market and non market activities so when we are talking about economic activities that means for money non economic activities that is only for the self consumption for self satisfaction economic activities can be categorized into three parts and that is primary secondary and tertiary activity now first we will discuss about primary activity in this type of activities natural resources are exploited for the production and this activity is related to agriculture poultry farming fishing horticulture animal husbandry mining quarrying etc that means it is based on natural resource next is secondary activities in a simple word we can say the activities which converts raw material into useful goods that is called secondary activities and in this activities that is manufacturing process is there so due to this all the industries are covered in this activity because we are converting raw all raw material into finished goods and next is that is tertiary activities tertiary activities does not produce anything but provides services or we can say it provides aids or help support to primary and secondary activities that is banking transport finance communications teaching insurance all these different types of services come under tertiary activity now we can say or we can underst understand through one example that is to grow sugar cane that is called primary activities because in this process natural resources that is soil and other natural resources are used to get the production and after that sugar cane can be converted into sugar that is through industries sugar industries so that means it converts raw material into finished good or more useful goods and that's why it is called secondary activities or manufacturing and next sugar cane will move not move by their own it requires transport and services the shopkeeper who is selling the sugar that is also engaged in tertiary activities because he is providing his service so all the sectors of economy are interdependent okay these are called primary secondary and tertiary activities as we have informed you that all the 
non economic activities are called as self consumption but all economic activities which is for the income so can be divided into two parts market activities market activities means the activities which involve remuneration to those who perform the activities for wages or profit or we can say when some products or service is produced to sold in the market it is called market activities now non market activities these activities refer to production activities which are performed for self consumption and processing of primary products suppose if a farmer produces just to meet his family needs he is not selling his produce to the market that is called a non market activities now you can see the example of food prepared by your mother that is not for the market that is only for the self consumption your mother is preparing food for the family for the benefit of family members but if you go to the restaurant in buying food items finished from them you have to pay so that means in both the activities the same work is going on but one is for market and another for non market activity so this is the difference between market and non market activities and now again the our topic was people as resource so that means human resources now we'll discuss about the quality of population india which is a which is having a large population and normally we blame for all the problems of this population but we are talking about quality of population so for the quality of population what we require that is health because nowadays we can easily understand the importance of health education and skills determine the quality of the population illiterate and unhealthy population can be a liability for the economy you just imagine jab aap bimar padte hain so how much you depend on your parents so literate and healthy population can be made into an asset for the economy which contributes towards the gdp now what is gdp that is gross domestic product that means total production of the country and production for that that means people are having employment and employment through literate and healthy population and due to this gdp increases now one by one we will discuss all these determinants for the quality population education education which play an important role for the overall personality of a person not only a person but society also educated people 
on more than the uneducated people. Education enhances the literacy level and skill level of a person. It also helps in enriching the culture of the society. As presence of educated persons in society not only benefits to them, but overall the society. Literate population is an asset to the economy. It leads to higher productivity. It opens new avenues for a person. It contributes to the growth of society. And the most important, it enhances the national income. Now, what is national income? That means income of the nation. But nation is earning earning. Who earns? The people, the citizen of the country. So that means it enhances the national income, cultural richness, and the efficiency of the government. And this is the reason the government has taken various steps to spread education among the people. And the most important step to provide universal access to education. And that is education for all. So government prepares, makes various plans to increase the retention of students and special emphasis is given on girls' education. Because if we will see our literacy rate, you will find even in the beginning of 21st century, if you are talking about 2001 in India, literacy rate was 65%. And if you will see male and female literacy rate, you will find that female literacy rate was 54% and male 76%. You just imagine in the beginning of 21st century, half of the females were not able to get the basic education. This is the reason that our government is trying or giving more stress on girls' education. Different plans are introduced by the government to increase the literacy rate. And now we'll see that how government, we are different policies adopted by government on higher education or education. So now we'll discuss about the five-year plans. In the first five-year plan, expenditure on education was rupees 151 crores. Now it has increased first to 10th plan. 43,825 crores. Previously, expenditure on education was 0.64% of GDP. Now, beginning of the 21st century, it was 3.98%. Even we can see the literacy rate also, which has grown from 18% in 1951 to more than 70% in 2011. But still, there is a long way to move. As we have informed you, literacy rate is higher among males compared to females. Kerala is a state with more than 95% literacy rate. 
while some states have a very low literacy rate. So this is the policy adopted by government. The government has launched Sarva Siksha Abhiyan. That means education for all. It is a significant step towards providing elementary, that is a basic eight class. Education to all children in the age group of six to 14 years. And it is a time bound program of the central government in partnership with the states, the local and the community for attaining the goal of universalization of elementary education. Not only Sarasik Shabiyan, government also provides midday meal. And the purpose of this program scheme to encourage attendance in schools and increase their nutritional status of so that children of poor people can attend the school. So these types of policies of the government could add to the literate minds and further the economic development. Now, after that, we'll talk about the policy of government and higher education. The policy of Indian government under the 10th five-year plan focuses on improving the education sector and now enrollment from six to nine percent. It focuses on increasing assess quality and adoption of state-specific curriculum. Modification vocationalizations, and networking on the use of IT, information technology. Vocational courses are also offered. And it also focuses on distance education. Convergence of formal and non-formal distance and IT education institution. And this is the reason that in our country, literacy level is increasing 